Hello my friends, today we will take a look at Panasonic Lumix G Vario 7-14mm f4 ASPH ultra wide lens for micro four thirds cameras. So we will take a look at the image quality, handling, build quality and other characteristics of this lens. So as I have said, this is ultra wide zoom lens. It covers focal distance from 7 to 14 millimeters, which is a full frame equivalent of 14 to 28 millimeters. At 7 millimeters, the angle is extremely wide. It is much wider than 8 or 9 millimeters because with ultra wide lenses, 1 millimeter at wide end is a lot. So it is useful for landscapes, for small spaces, for shooting in interior, and so on. And it zooms to 14 millimeters, which is still wide angle. So this focal range is, in my opinion, quite useful. It is important to say that this is not a fisheye lens, it is a rectilinear lens, so it doesn't have that extreme distortion typical for fisheye lenses. We will get to that later in the video. Ultra wide zoom lenses are usually quite big because they need to concentrate a lot of light, which requires a lot of glass. But this is quite a small lens, even for micro four thirds standard. It is really remarkably small, but it has some heft to it. It feels very solid, the rear part of the lens is metal, and the mount is metal as well. Other parts are made of plastics, but these are really high quality plastics, so overall I have no complaints about the build quality. But this lens is not weather sealed, which would be really nice, because new higher end Panasonic cameras are weather sealed. There is this lens hood that is permanently attached to the body, because it has to protect that front element that would be otherwise exposed and easily damaged. That means that you cannot use filters on this lens unless you use some special attachment and this lens also comes with large lens cap which is held in place by friction. In terms of controls there are no switches on this lens. This lens is not stabilized and you can turn the autofocus on and off in the camera. So the only control elements on this lens are the zoom ring and the focus ring. Both are fortunately very smooth, so it is possible to make smooth zoom in and out and Panasonic G85 for example can even keep focus while zooming in easier situations. The front element of this lens moves while you are zooming, but it stays within that integrated lens hood. So I'm not sure if I can say that this is an internal focusing lens or not. Focus ring is also smooth, but it is focused by wire without hard stop, so it is not ideal for manual focusing in video. But this is one of the better ones, the travel of this ring is quite long, so we can use it for occasional focus pulling. This is a constant aperture lens, so you can use that f4 aperture throughout the whole focal range. f4 on smaller micro four thirds sensor isn't particularly suitable for low light. For stills, you can go lower with the shutter speed if you are shooting still objects especially if you have camera with stabilized sensor. For video, it really depends on what ISO are you comfortable to shoot at. Also for astrophotography, this isn't the best choice since you would have to use high ISO to avoid star trailing. Constant aperture is also suitable for filmmaking because you can shoot wide open and keep the same aperture while zooming in. And now let's take a look at the image quality and performance of this lens. As usually, we will start with the sharpness. Sharpness fortunately is a big strength of this lens. This is one of the sharpest micro four thirds lens overall. Fortunately it is sharp right from wide open at f4 at 7mm. That is actually the sharpest point of this lens which is certainly very good because this is probably where the most of owners will want to use it the most of the time. Sharpness basically stays the same at f5.6 and up to f8 you will not see much difference. The sharpness is very uniform here. At f11 sharpness decreases pretty significantly because of the diffraction, but considering that crop factor and the focal length, there aren't many reasons to use aperture of more than 8 on this lens. As you zoom in, the sharpness slightly decreases, but it is still very sharp. At 10mm it is still sharp from f4 to f8. f5.6 is probably the sharpest point, but the differences are really small here and the sharpness decreases a lot at f11 here as well. From 10 to 14 millimeters, it needs to be stopped down to about f5.6 for maximal corner sharpness. Here I would also like to quickly compare it to 12 to 60 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 kit lens at 12 millimeters. At f4, the 7 to 14 millimeters is actually much sharper in the corners than the kit lens. In the center of the frame, there isn't much difference. When stopped down to f5.6, the corner sharpness of the kit lens increases about 7 to 14 mm is still much sharper in the corners and even stop down to f8 the kit lens can't match the sharpness of 7 to 14 mm and that kit lens is quite sharp and 12 mm isn't the sharpest point of 7 to 14 mm 
So overall, I'm very pleased with the sharpness of this lens and I can really say that it is excellent in this regard. Distortion is difficult to evaluate here because there are in-camera corrections applied in Panasonic cameras and those cannot be turned off. But with those corrections, there is basically no distortion at all. Lines are straight and as long as it looks good, I don't mind in-camera corrections. So my conclusion is that the distortion is not a problem with this lens. Regarding the chromatic aberration, there is small amount of chromatic aberration even though that it is corrected in camera as well, especially in corners at 7mm, but it is under control and it can be further fixed in Adobe Lightroom for example, so that is not a problem either. Another area where this lens really excels is contrast and color reproduction, and that is especially important for me, sometimes even more important than the sharpness. And here again I can say that contrast and color separation is really good, and users will appreciate that especially while shooting landscapes. I also like the color reproduction, there is no unnatural tint. Panasonic cameras also produce nice colors in JPEGs, so overall I'm really happy about the optical qualities of this lens. These ultra-wide lenses are difficult to make, but Panasonic did a really good job here, especially when we consider how small this lens is. Moving on to the autofocus, at 7mm, even at f4, almost everything is in focus all the time. So with this lens, the camera has really easy job with autofocusing. In stills, the autofocus is almost instant, but it slows down a bit in low light. A focus in video is generally a weakness of Panasonic cameras, which is why I really like to use this lens on my G85 for video, because as I said, camera has really easy job autofocusing with this lens. And in situations that are typical for use of this type of lens, it actually works really well and it kind of solves the issue with Panasonic autofocus. But having said that, when you get it into a difficult situation, like when you want it to focus from very close distance to something that is far away, it will perform as any lens on Panasonic camera in that situation. So it will be slow and it will hunt as you can see here. But as I have said, these situations are not very common for this type of lenses. Also, as you zoom in, the depth of field gets shallower and the lens has more difficult job focusing, so it will perform much worse. But generally, it is a very good lens for shooting video in my opinion. It is a constant aperture lens. It has smooth zoom ring, sharpness is very good, colors and contrast as well. And one specific benefit important for ultra-wide lenses are those in-camera corrections. Those work in video as well, of course. And it's really nice to be able to get distortion-free footage out of the camera, because getting rid of that distortion in video is a bit more difficult. Generally, I think that ultra-wide lens belongs into every complete lens collection. I personally really like shooting ultra-wide. It gives you some more options to approach photography in a creative way. It lets you work with the background if your subject is close. It makes it a bit more easy to find interesting foreground and landscape shots. You have more options to use leading lines to get unusual perspective, to use interior space and so on. Of course there are some challenges with using lenses of this type. For example, if you are shooting and your camera isn't leveled, you will get distorted picture. Here I don't mean bowel distortion. This for example occurs when you are shooting architecture and you would need a tilt shift lens to get rid of that effect. But generally I do recommend anyone to at least try some wide angle lens. One problem with this lens is a price. The price has come down a lot because this is actually quite old lens. It was introduced back in 2009, but it still costs around $800. You can get a good deal for around $600 if you know where to look. And that is still a lot if you have a tight budget, but as I have said, these lenses are quite difficult to make, but at least you will get that great optical quality. So to sum up, I really like this lens. Build quality is very good. Zoom and focus ring are smooth, image quality is exceptional in terms of sharpness, contrast and color reproductions are very good as well, in-camera corrections are taking care of distortion and chromatic aberration, autofocus works well in easy situation, in more difficult situations it will be slow and it will hunt. It is also a very good lens for filmmaking thanks to the constant aperture, in-camera corrections and overall handling. Negatives are the lack of weather sealing, maximal aperture of f4 is rather slow, and use of the filters with this lens would be very difficult because of that integrated lens hood. But overall I do recommend this lens, 
and there will be one more video featuring this lens and in that video I will be testing G85 with this lens as a vlogging setup. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you have found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.